Hello everyone, welcome back, here is Van Amsen and today we got something incredibly uh, exciting lined up. We are diving deep into a problem that not only tests your coding skill, but also your problem solving power. So it's called minimum number of taps to open, to water a garden. So it's daily challenge on lead code and believe me, it's as uh, interesting as it sounds. So stick around uh, till the end because we are going to explore this in uh, Python and I will share some quick implementation in other languages in the description below as well. Uh, so the problem tells us that we have a one dimensional garden and uh, there are uh, n plus one tabs located at uh, each point from zero to n in the garden. And uh, each tab has a certain range uh, it can water. So our global uh, range and our goal uh, is to find the minimum number of tabs uh, needed to water the entire garden. And if it's not possible, we simply return minus one. So now let's look at uh, example. So uh, here is quite a nice uh, visualization. And given n of five and our array of ranges uh, three, four, one, one, zero, zero. So uh, zero uh, index uh, tab can water from uh, zero minus three up to zero plus three. So it will be from minus three to three. So it, you can see it's a range. And this tab will water from index one plus four and from uh, one minus four. So it become uh, minus three uh, to five and so on. And our garden uh, is located from uh, yeah zero to five, uh, including. So as you can see, uh, just by uh, opening uh, one tab, so output should be one because we can open this particular tab and uh, yeah, water whole garden. So now if we look closely, just by opening the second uh, tab, so uh, zero indexed, we uh, can uh, water the entire garden from uh, point zero to point uh, five. So the minimum number of tabs to open is just one. Okay, so uh, makes sense and doesn't it? So understanding examples like this help us uh, shape our algorithm and debug it later. So now that we got the example, uh, let's dive into approach. So we will use greedy approach. So uh, greedy algorithm are fantastic. So they go for the best uh, local optimum at each step, aiming for a global optimum. So now in the context of our problem, each tab uh, we open commit us to watering a specific interval of the garden. And the greedy strategy here is to go for the tab that extend our watering reach as far as possible to the right. So makes sense. So uh, in this case, as you can see, uh, the uh, yeah, second tab was watering whole garden. So it's uh, just require uh, one tab. So that's why greedy approach is uh, interesting. And also uh, we will use the magic of the farthest reach uh, in the greedy approach. So one of the most pivotal concept is uh, in our greedy approach is to uh, farthest reach. So this dynamic variable keeps track of the farthest point we can uh, water with the tab that uh, intersect our current range. So it's crucial because it tells us whether we need to open a new tab or not. So it's like uh, our uh, North Star guiding us through this problem. So now as we uh, understand the basic concept, I will implement uh, and then we will uh, dive deeper and explain what we did and why. So we start by uh, ri zero uh, n plus one and four i r in enumerate 
range if r uh, zero continue and left max zero uh, i minus r and ri left will be max ri left left okay. i plus r okay so this is first uh, step uh, all right so the first step is to initialize an ri uh, called r where each index will store the farthest point that uh, can be watered starting from that index and we then iterate through the range array to populate uh, the array so uh, this is a core logic so now uh, let's implement the core so it will be and for can reach count zero 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 and for i reach in enumerate array if greater than and if far can reach less than end and return minus one so we didn't reach and end count will be far can reach and count plus one and far can reach reach yeah max far can reach 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 okay and return count uh, and less n okay so now uh, what we did uh, onto the core part of this problem we initialize uh, and as the rightmost point uh, of the range that we can uh, water so far so far can reach and as the farthest point we can reach by opening a new tab and count as number of tabs uh, we have open and we iterate through the array uh, and for each index uh, i greater than end uh, it means we have reached the end of the range covered by the uh, last tab and we need to open a new tab so in that case we update uh, end and also count so now let's uh, run it to verify uh, it's working so yeah hopefully it worked uh, perfect so uh, with this simple example we mentioned before it uh, required us just to open one tab so now let's dive deeper into a uh, code so uh, you understand it fully so we will start by initializing a few variables first and with uh, and we'll set to zero representing the farthest point we watered so far and next uh, far can reach which also be set to zero representing the uh, farthest mm, uh, point we could reach by opening a new tab and finally count uh, which will uh, keep track of the number of tabs uh, we have open so then we uh, sort interval so it's a good idea to sort uh, tabs uh, by their starting point and uh, this uh, way we can iterate through them in a manner that makes it easier to greedy uh, choice so uh, the heart of our solution as we loop uh, through sorted interval uh, and we update uh, fork and reach to the farthest point that any tab intersecting with zero and uh, could water and also we need to check for the gap so what if we find a gap uh, a spot in our garden that not tap uh, can water so well in this case we simply return minus one so it means it's not possible to water the entire garden with this uh, available tap uh, due to gap so uh, throughout this process we will keep a counter and so it's counter to keep track of minimum number of taps we need to uh, open and uh, yeah all right so uh, let's talk about uh, complexity so it's uh, on uh, for this greedy approach and uh, the space complexity is uh, also uh, on so yeah pretty pretty good 
and uh, also uh, I got uh, implementation uh, for this problem in other programming languages like Go, Rust, C++ and much more. So now, uh, last part, let's submit uh, our implementation to verify it's working. So it's working and as you can see, our implementation beat 39% with respect to uh, memory and also 96 with respect to runtime. I think I have even uh, previously a bit better result, but uh, more or less the same implementation. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it was 99 with respect to runtime and 55 with respect to uh, memory, but probably the test case are sometimes uh, different. So yes, we did it. And we not only solve this problem, but also uh, try to understand the underlying logic and also intuition behind it. So I hope uh, this session was uh, as uh, enlightening uh, as possible. And if you enjoyed it, uh, please hit the like uh, button, share and subscribe for more uh, coding uh, adventures, tutorials and in future uh, much more. And also, uh, yeah, until next time, keep practicing. Happy coding and see you next time.